This is Phil Masters, and on this episode, we're finishing part two of the Star Wars The Force Awakens video title. It's going to look like this. Now down below in the download section is a download pack. It contains everything that you're gonna need for this project. Everything will be done in After Effects. So let's jump straight into it and start animating. Okay, so let's bring in the uh, Photoshop file that we uh, created in the previous tutorial. So I'm just gonna bring in Star Wars logo PSD, select open. Now we're gonna import it as a composition and selecting editable layer styles and select okay. Now, the reason we do this is because two reasons. One, it gives us a folder with all the layers that we created in Photoshop, as well as all the files in a new composition. So if I double select that, what will happen is it'll automatically start a new composition along with each individual layer on our timeline. So the next step, we're gonna grab star and star background. I'm gonna go up to layer, pre-compose. I'm gonna rename this star and you'll make sure that move all attributes into the new composition is selected and then select OK. Now we're going to repeat the process with wars and wars background. So let's go up to layers, pre-compose. I'm just going to call this wars. Again, make sure that the uh, all attributes go into the new composition, select OK. Now that we've pre-composed the layers together, what that means is, for example, I can move star up and down and around on its own separate layer. And same with wars. So what we're gonna do now though is go layers, new, solid, select white, pure white, select okay. I'm gonna select the make comp size button and I'm gonna rename this stars and then select okay. I'm now gonna select the stars solid and drop that below the two text layers. Now with the uh, stars solid selected, let's go to effects, simulation and select CC starburst. It's gonna run a quick RAM preview now, and then we're going to make some adjustments to the timing. First up, I'm going to increase the scatter and till I find a value that I'm happy with. So yeah, about 450 I'll enter into here. So let's put 450 in. I'm going to adjust the speed value now. So let's go up to speed and change the value to 0.03. So that slows down the stars as you can see. And then we'll go to size and we'll change the value to 45. So we've got a nice star field. If obviously you want to increase the stars, just a matter of putting more stars in there, but I'm happy with that. Now we're gonna add some more text. It's gonna be the force awakens. I'm gonna put that in between star and wars. So first of all, let's open up star and move star up. And we're gonna open up wars by pressing P and uh, move that down. So I'm going to get the text tool and I'm going to uh, make sure it's white. As you can see on the right hand side, the text I'm using is Botany MT. So I'm just gonna quickly draw in a text box and I'm just gonna rescale that and I'm going to write The Force Awakens. Now I'm gonna have to resize this so that text all fits in there. And then I'm gonna select all the text and I'm gonna resize it here on the right hand side like so. I'm just gonna clean the box up by moving the box around the text box until I'm happy with it. So I'm gonna make sure that the text is centered. So I'm just gonna get the move tool. I'm just gonna re-jig the text. Now it needs to be a little bit smaller than that. So what I'll do is I'll press S on the text layer and uh, just rescale it on the timeline until I'm happy with it. So what I'm trying to do is make sure that the H in the and the N in Awakens fits between the S and the R like you can see in front of you. Now we're gonna start doing some animations. So we're gonna animate the star and wars so that they start together and then they actually separate. And then what will happen is the Force Awakens will appear. So let's select star first of all by pressing P for position. And then we're going to bring it down so it fits about halfway on the Force Awakens text. And then what we're going to do is go to Wars and do the same. We're gonna lift that up so it's closer. 
Now this is a start point for our animation. So let's make sure that we're at the beginning of the timeline and select star and put a keyframe for both star and wars. And then we're gonna move forward in whatever amount of time that you think it's gonna take for your text to move forward before revealing the Force Awakens text. So we're probably looking around about 30 to 40 frames. And then what we're gonna do is uh, move both Star and Wars out enough so it's just above the Force Awakens text, as you can see here. So what happens if I play it, it slowly opens, and then what will happen is it stops above and below the Force Awakens text. Let's unlock the text animator now. So let's select animator, as you can see here. And I'm gonna go and select all transformation properties. This will allow every single text element, every bit of font, for example, down here, to be manipulated. For example, we can get that nice little swing by making adjustments to the Y rotation. So I'm just going to uh, set a keyframe in here now. And I'll just run a quick example. If we start playing around with some of the uh, features here, you can see that we can make adjustments to the text, each individual word, letter, and so forth. But I'm only interested in the Y rotation. So let's move the timeline back to the beginning. And I'm gonna set a value here of 90%. So that will start at so that the text is facing us at the beginning. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna close down all the values in there and we're gonna change the opacity. Let's, so let's press T for opacity um, on the text layer. And I'm gonna set a keyframe when the text for Star and Wars stops. And I'm gonna leave that at 100% and then I'm gonna bring the timeline back to the beginning and drop the value down to zero. And then I'm going to play that and see when the text starts to appear. And then we're gonna make some slight variations to the timeline so we can get the timing correct. And that's a bit of trial and error. I'm gonna do this freehand. So as you can see, the text is still appearing above Star and Wars. So to fix that, I'm just going to zoom in on the timeline using the slider down the bottom. I'm going to grab the opacity for zero and 100% and move them to the very end of the animation, like so. And I'm just gonna play that and see what that looks like. And I'm pretty happy with that. It's, that's pretty much worked out perfectly. So make some finer adjustments if we want by simply uh, selecting away and, and making uh, finer adjustments again further with the opacity and so forth with the uh, keyframes. Okay, so that's a lot better. So this is looking more like the trailer now. So this is pretty much done if you wanted to have just the basic trailer logo, okay? And the animation behind it, but we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna be changing this up so that the text looks very similar to the Blu-ray or DVD Star Wars editions that you get. So let's select the pre-composed star file and we'll open that up and you'll see that it's automatically in its own timeline. So let's import the Force Awakens footage video that's in the download pack and we'll be using that. Let's bring that on the timeline and I'm gonna put it in between star and star background. Now, the reason I do that is if I was to put it down below, you'll see that the black solid that's in the uh, timeline uh, will be on top of it. And that's not what we want. We just want the outer size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the video and resize. And I'm gonna press Z on my keyboard so I can zoom in to the project. So I can some, make some finer adjustments. And I'm just gonna resize it. And I want the video to sit behind the S and the T. Now, once you're happy with where the video is sitting, make sure that the video file is selected. And I'm gonna grab the mask pen. And what I'm gonna do is go, pretty much go through and cut out the shape of S and T. So by selecting it, just simply go through. And if you press the space bar, it'll allow you to pan around as you're working and cutting out the video file around the text. So what I'll do, I'm just gonna go around this. You probably can't see the mask too well, only because the mask at the moment is yellow, 
But what I'll do a little bit later on in this video, I'll just change it to a different color so you can actually see what I'm doing when I'm going around and cutting the text out. So if I zoom out, I'll be able to show you what I've done. I've cut out the video and it's behind the S and the T. We've got the nice yellow border. And if I scrub across the timeline, you can see the video plays. Now, the great thing about why we pre-compose the star and the war separately is because what happens is it's attached to the actual footage itself. So when the footage moves around, as you can see, it doesn't change the video uh, in the text. So that's a great way of setting up the project so that you've got animated stills or uh, video um, in the background uh, behind text and so forth. So I'm going back into the star pre-comp. I'm just gonna bring in the same video and uh, just move it forward so it starts different in the text. I'm gonna resize and go through the whole process again. Just resize the video, except this time I'm putting it behind the A and the R. And obviously press Z on the keyboard so I can bring up the zoom tool and zoom in. Um, I'm just gonna move this into play. So when I'm happy with that, I'm gonna get the mask tool and then I'm gonna go around the A and the R. Now, one of the variations that we will come across when we're cutting out stuff with a masking tool is we may find that we're cutting out something within the mask. Now, there is a way around that, and I'll show you that shortly. I'll just quickly cut these letters out. And then once I've done that, I'm just going to uh, scrub the timeline so you can see the video. So I'm just going to zoom out really quickly. Uh, as you can see, all the videos there, but if you can see inside the A and the R, there's video still in there. Now, generally, if you put a mask in there, it doesn't do anything, however. Let's uh, use the mask tool, and I'll just show you the workaround. And it's quite simple, actually, so I'm just gonna cut the A out first. But before we do that, I'll just uh, make it so you can see it. So just select the mask by pressing M, and I'm um, gonna change the color here. I'm gonna change it to blue, just so you can see what I'm actually doing. Select OK. And I'm just gonna use the mask tool now and uh, cut out the middle of the A. Like so. And then you can see the mask, which is called mask two down on the timeline and it's got add. We're gonna open that drop down box and hit subtract. And as you can see, it subtracts one mask from the other. Now you can enter many masks on one individual layer. So I'm just gonna go around the R and do the same thing. Go down to mask three now, which is there and subtract. And that's the A and the R done. So if I zoom out and go back to the main project window, as you can see, the two videos now um, are playing in the text. So all we need to do now is repeat the process, but in the wars pre-comp. So again, we're just going to go through the whole process again um, and open up Wars, and I'm just going to bring in the video and start the whole process again. So I'm gonna quickly speed up this part of the video so you don't have to see the whole process again. Um, and then we're gonna to get to the stage when we're getting ready to animate a camera. I'm just finishing off the R now and just cutting that out. And uh, then we're just gonna obviously go in to, uh, by pressing M on the video that we're working on to open up the mask settings and uh, just drop that to subtract instead of add. So we cut out the video. Um, that's the wars part done. As you can see, the video in WA and RS are not synchronized. And that's because we've moved the video on the timeline like I showed you in star. Um, so what we've got here at the moment, we've got four different videos playing. However, what we want to do though, is have the Star Wars logo come from really close to the viewer and go out in outer space. Let's go to new camera and I'm just going to uh, make the uh, preset uh, 35 millimeter. Once I've done that, select okay, leave everything else the same. Now let me just show you something. Uh, as soon as I uh, open up the camera and go to transform, um, and use the position. What happens is you can probably just see it. All I'm doing is affecting the actual text for The Force Awakens, and that's because it's on a 3D layer. So let's select Star and Wars and make them 3D layers, like so, on the timeline. So when I open up the camera again and zoom in, you'll notice those three elements are now affected. 
So that's a good thing. So what we're gonna do is scrub to where we want the logo to be and zoom right in. So I want the uh, logo to start about here. And I'm gonna bring that to the beginning of the timeline and put a keyframe in there. And then I'm gonna move it right out on the timeline till the text stops moving. This is about here. And then I'm going to zoom out to where I want the Star Wars logo to finish. So once I've zoomed that out and I'm happy with it, I'm just gonna press N on the keyboard and that will cut my work space down. And I'm gonna press hard enter on the numerical keypad so I can do a preview in a render mode and see what we've created. So what we've got is the finished element which you can go in at any time and turn those videos off so that you can just put the original Star Wars The Force Awakens logo together or uh, you can get the videos going back again. So you're pretty much making two logos in one. Now you don't have to make it Star Wars, you can make your own production information, um, have for example film masters and have all your um, different types of videos that you've been working on as an example and it's great otherwise for a DVD menu. So let's uh, render that out. So let's go file, I'm gonna export, add to render queue, otherwise the uh, shortcut is control M and I'm just gonna change this to a H264 file, select OK and just simply save the location of where you want that video to be put. And when you're happy with that, I'm just gonna call that fin for finish or end. Hit save and render. And once the render's done, our video is done. That's it. That is how we make the Star Wars The Force Awakens video logo. Now, if you want to become a Film Master subby, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is simply subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook and on Twitter. And until next time, don't just film it, master it.